Yes, sir. What is going on, YouTube? It is your boy, Denali, a.k.a. Don Squally. And if you guys are here, you probably already read the title of today's video. And uh, for today, man, we are going to be doing the F-Sport bumper swap on my 2010 non-F-Sport. So uh, it's been a long time coming. Obviously, I've rebadged this thing with the uh, F-Sport badge. And uh, it's always been the plan to do the front end swap on my 2010. For those of you guys who've been subscribed, had this car for almost two years now. It's about a year and a half. And uh, it's the 2010 old school body style front bumper. And I just absolutely hate it. I think it's probably the worst feature about this vehicle. The worst thing that cosmetically that I really just don't like. Um, so over the last couple of months, I've been sourcing the parts to do the F-Sport conversion. And if you guys can see back there, let's go have a look, man. Right here, what I have is a 2013 to 2015 RX 350 F-Sport bumper. Now the idea with this bumper was to keep the stock headlights and do some body work around them in order to keep the stock headlights because this thing does have the auto focus headlights. Uh, the headlights are in really good condition. I'm pretty sure they're almost brand new uh, on this vehicle right now. But to be honest with you, I was just looking into it. It's going to take too much time, time that I do not have uh, in order to get the bumper the way that I wanted it and if I ever got into an accident or I had to do repairs It would be a custom repair whereas the way I'm going to do it now I ended up finding a very cheap set of RX uh, 350 headlights with the LEDs and everything like that The price was right. So I decided we're just going to go ahead and do the headlight swap as well so I will say this, putting this front bumper together was very difficult. There's a lot of small just weird little parts uh, that you normally wouldn't think that you'd need and then there's just a ton of clips holding this bottom spoiler on the fog light bezels I don't know how well the lighting is here, but holding the grill in, the bottom grill, uh, this bottom black piece is completely separate from the actual bumper. So as far as me showing you guys how I got the bumper together, I'm not going to go through any of that stuff. Uh, there's a meme going around right now. This might age me or uh, date this video. Uh, don't ask me how I did it. I just did it. It was hard. That's that right there. So uh, I am, however, going to be showing you guys the process of changing the bumper because obviously, uh, you know, I want to show you guys something as far as the process goes. So I'm going to go ahead, grab myself some coffee from inside the house, and then I'm going to pop the hood here. We're going to figure out all the screws, all the clips that do need to come off of this thing. And then uh, once I get it off, I'm going to show you the stuff I am going to be deleting. Uh, from my understanding, what I've seen online is there might be something around this top grill piece, part of the, uh, the rad support that I may have to trim in order to get this top piece. I, one of the forums I was looking at was saying that this grill just comes back a little too far. But that was also for the F-Sport grill. This is uh, not the F-Sport grill. So we'll see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, like I say, grab my coffee. Uh, and then we're just going to jump right into this. I'm going to show you guys the small little hurdles uh, that I kind of come across. Which I don't anticipate there being many. Um, it's pretty straightforward OEM swap. Um, but... We'll see. So yeah, if you guys are uh, here for the F Sport RX350 bumper conversion, let's get right into it, man. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is remove all of these plastic covers under here. There's a bunch of clips, as you can see, that go all the way around. This is all going to come off. Uh, and then we're going to remove the clips off the top of the bumper here. And then we'll start working on all the clips along the bottom. So... I'm going to throw the camera on the tripod just to get some, I guess, B-roll clips here. But uh, I'm not going to film everything because you guys pretty much get the gist of it. We've done body swaps and bumper swaps in the past, so this ain't really nothing new. Okay, and then underneath here, we're going to have uh, one, one clip and then a couple 10 mils. And I think at the corners as well, if you can see over there. So I'm just going to go around, pop out all of the clips. 
I don't think I'm going to put the camera on the tripod for this one because, uh, well, it just it doesn't go that low. So uh, I'm going to get down on the ground, undo all the bolts along the bottom, and then we'll move to the uh, fender clips there. So next up, we're going to move to the uh, fenders here. Now, I did remove the tires on both sides, and then I uh, obviously undid these, but I forgot to film. So uh, you're just going to twist these 90 degrees, and then this fender liner is going to just unclip from here. I'm hoping that we can reuse this fender liner. We'll see once we get the new bumper on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same for the other side. Alrighty, and then in behind this fender liner, ugh, there should be a 10 millimeter bolt there. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that on both sides. And I'm gonna turn the light on on the camera here. Up inside here should be a clip. That's the clip. Okay, so the clip sits inside the bumper like this. So you just got to push in on this tab on the side and then this will pull out. So pretty straightforward, but I have seen videos online where people do actually break these. And well, that would be an annoying thing to get, especially if it was a weekend. So, Alrighty, and last but not least, there's this one last clip here. You got to undo this and then the bumper should be released from the middle. And then we just go ahead, pull the sides off. There's a clip underneath each side of the headlight here. I'll put the tripod down for that and uh, yeah, show you guys what it looks like when I'm taking it off. I'm going to have to disconnect the fog lights as well as the washer jets here. And I'll show you guys what I'm going to be doing with those because I'm not going to be using the washer jets on the new bumper. Alrighty, so we should be ready to pull the bumper off. Okay, so the bumper's off, just chilling on this seat. So this washer fluid jet here that comes out and washes the headlights, literally never used it before. Uh, the, the fog, I, I keep the car as clean as I can for the amount of driving that I do. So it's usually never been that big of an issue. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to snip this line here. I'm going to stick a bolt in there, use this clamp or a clamp to just kind of basically delete this. And uh, there's also... From what I've seen online, a fuse that I can pull to stop the button from working. Uh, I don't see it posing a big issue, but I also don't want to burn out the pump if somebody is trying to push it or, you know, my kid's in there pushing it by accident, whatever. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just straight up cut this line. The only bumper that I could find for the price that I was willing to pay didn't have the washer jets and it had the parking sensors which this car doesn't have so those are just dummies in there right now but yeah i'm gonna go ahead cut those lines i cut throw a couple bolts in them and then we should be ready to start pulling the headlights so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and do that show you guys what i come up with and uh we'll go on to the next step okay so for the washer jets there was a, a t over here and then it ran across to the bumper to the other headlight. So I just ended up cutting it before the T, throwing a bolt in there. And that's basically going to live like that. There's no way this is leaking. It's, it, you know, unless the pump would have to be on in order for this to get anything to it anyways. Um, you know, like I say, the thing's not something I've ever used. If I can pull the fuse just to get it, uh, you know, peace of mind type of thing, then I'm going to go ahead and do that. So now the next thing we got to do is move on to the headlights. So I'm going to go ahead, pull the headlights out and um, the bulb should all be the same. I'll show you guys what I did for the LED strips at the bottom because those will be functional uh, once we get the new bumper on here. Once the headlights are in, we'll hit, start doing the really heavy stuff and that's uh, getting everything bolted up and uh, getting the bumper plugged in. So little nervous but uh, it's the way it goes with these types of swaps but so far so good it's what it looks like now so i'm gonna start picking away at these headlights and let you know how it goes we're at a point now where there's no video online for this type of thing so i'm basically just gonna figure it out let you guys know and this will be the official how-to and um yeah, you guys can drop a like or comment down there anytime if you'd like. Uh -huh.
Okay, so there's one, two, three, and then four bolts on the headlights here. So they're loosened up. Should be anyways. There we go. Pull them straight out. Beautiful. So, looks like we got a couple plugs here on the back. Maybe I can move the camera a little better for you guys. Hopefully you're even up in the shot there. So, just going to unplug these. I I'm going to be reusing a couple of these uh, different bulbs in here. And there's a couple things we're going to not be using. Because there are a couple uh, plugs here related to the auto headlight focus uh, module and stuff like that. Which we will obviously not be using. Alrighty, so headlight is out. Now there's a couple plugs here that make me a little nervous. Like this big one right here. I don't think I have that on the new headlights. But I was looking online and all these bulbs, like the turn signals, the high low beams, those should all be the same. There's a couple of these plugs I'm not going to be using. I think those are just for like the corner markers here. If it's the same plug and I have it on there, I'll be using it. If not, not terribly concerned with that. Now, one other thing is the bracket. This is one of the parts that I can get away with not using. So this bracket for the 2013 to 2015, I don't know if it's the F Sport bumper or all of the bumpers, but this bracket is missing this little tab right here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead, just get my Dremel, cut that across there. And if you look at this part online, it's essentially the same bracket just missing this little support right there. So I'm gonna go ahead, trim that off, uh, and then we're gonna get the other headlight here. I kinda of wanna get one side on before I take apart the other side. Uh, just in case there's something that's not gonna make this work right now, I can at least put this headlight back on, throw the bumper on with a couple of clips, and at least drive this thing around if needed. But, you know, we're hoping that things progress as, neat, as, uh, as they should rather so once i get uh, all the wiring figured out i'll let you guys know what's going on with that Alrighty, so we ran into a slight unforeseen issue with the headlights here now i didn't realize this uh this car had uh, hid headlights could have swore it didn't however the ballast which is what i was looking for to try to verify if it had hids is mounted to the bottom of the headlight here. Um, now, the problem with that is the headlights that I bought were non-HIDs. Um, so it's a different bulb size. And I was able to identify the wiring coming out that goes into the ballast that gives you um, 12 volts to the headlights. So I can get the headlights to work, but just the low beams and not the the high beams which these are um you know unfortunately they are uh high beam low beam so what i'm thinking i'm gonna do is what i'm gonna have to do is um i'm gonna have to just find somewhere around here where i can mount the ballast where it's gonna stay dry um i don't know maybe in here this all looks pretty clean so i can maybe mount it to this side and then uh, I'll do that on the opposite side. As for the LED strip, what I did a couple days ago, you can see this has the LED strip underneath here. Uh, what I ended up doing is I grabbed a harness. I forget what size this is, maybe a 9005 or a 9006. This is for the stock driver uh, DRLs on the 2010 RX. And uh, so I had this harness kicking around here uh, because I had a switch. I wanted to turn my DRLs off because I, you know, I do a lot of sitting in my car when I'm waiting for stuff. Uh, everywhere I drive is, is a long time, so I tend to be early. So when I'm sitting and I want the DRLs off, I had this switch installed. Well, I ended up connecting uh, that to the LED uh, power and ground that goes into the headlight here, uh, which is great because now... I can turn the LEDs on and off when I want. Uh, this isn't going to have a DRL bulb. I am going to put the bulb in so no moisture gets in and that's nice and sealed. 
uh, but the LED is gonna be my driver's light. So yeah, that's gonna be what happens for here. So I'm gonna go in and grab some lunch because I'm starving and I really didn't see this coming. I spent too much time kind of thinking about what I was gonna do with this. Uh, so yeah, that's the deal. We'll get back to you guys in a few. Okay, so I've had lunch. I've thought about what I'm gonna do here. Now, the big problem that I didn't realize is, is that the way that the high and low beams work on this specific model of 2010, I don't know if it's because it has HIDs or it has the auto uh, focusing headlights, but the way that the high beams work on this thing is when you press the high beams, it actually adjusts the headlight. So it's not actually putting more uh, voltage or amperage or however you want to say it to the light bulb to make it shine brighter. Uh, something in the headlight, there's a mechanism that flips and the headlight goes a little bit higher. Whereas the new headlights that I purchased, again, the, the people I bought these off of asked me numerous times, are you sure it's not HID? All that good stuff. I, you know, at the end of the day, it's my screw up. Ultimately, I did purchase the wrong headlights here. Um, so I've thought about it and the thing is I don't want to use the HIDs, uh, any of the HID parts that come off of the 2010 headlights. Now the problem is with that, I just have the ability right now to put power to a light bulb in either one of these sockets. That's how it's going right now. I'm going to get the new headlights put in, uh, figure out the bulb situation, show you guys what I'm working with. And then we're going to, uh, we're going to keep going with this swap. Okay, so now I just got to take this little lip off. I'm going to trim it just behind this plastic piece here. Uh, the bracket for the old bumper on the headlights, or sorry, the bracket for the new bumper on the headlight. Uh, this is going to interfere with it. So I'm just going to use the Dremel to trim that back right now. Alrighty, so we are going to start putting these headlights in now. Making sure I line up all of our brackets. Okay, so that looks good right there. Okay, so I'm gonna put the bolts in real quick and uh, I'm not gonna tighten them up right now because I wanna see how everything fits with the bumper. I'm gonna go ahead and put the opposite headlight in. I got a couple of uh, modifications I got to make obviously so I'm gonna go ahead and do those and I'll get back to you guys okay so both the headlights are in as you can see bolted up using the stock mounting points uh, so I have the harness that plugs into that big harness uh, for the stock light I've identified the uh, power wire that would be going into the HID ballast, which would be turning on uh, the, the headlights. And then these two plugs next to it also supply power. And those right there are the uh, high beams. And what that does in the stock 2010 headlights is it flicks the projector and makes it shine a little higher. So what I think I'm going to do is I have the uh, regular headlights LEDs mounted. So that'll be my low beam. I'm not going to be utilizing this light because I have that socket actually connected to the LED strip. So what I think I might do is use that second high beam power wire to power this bulb. I'm hoping that'll provide me enough light that I won't have to adjust the projector. And then if I've got LEDs in these bad boys here, which don't have any projector, I think that'll actually supply me quite a bit of light. That's the plan. Now, I haven't decided how I'm going to do this wiring plug right here. I think what I'll do is I'll put some tape here, plug these two wires in, use some hot glue and make sort of a little plug so I can actually unplug and plug it back in. And then I'll have to uh, make some sort of a cover, maybe with a piece of rubber. And then I'll just do a couple holes where my power lines need to go. Uh, but these two right here are powering my headlights. And then the two beside that will power the second headlight. I'm gonna go grab the bumper now and uh, start mocking her up. Alrighty, so I ended up getting the second bulb uh, wired up. I figured what better time than the present. What we have here is the stock DRL 
and that is the conversion harness and that's what's powering the led right there uh, now this is the big harness that went into the 2010 headlight and as you can see we've got it uh, pinned up rather roughly right here uh, so on this side is the power to the low beam right there you can see negative and positive and then right here we have the high beam what i'm going to be using for the high beam right here and that's the power switch that like i say was flicking the projector back and forth now that's going to turn on the second bulb right here so when i turn on the high beams this light will stay on and then this light will turn on and uh, i will demonstrate that so as you can see we've got our headlights on these are what the normal headlights are going to look like and then when i flick the high beams very bright the projection on the garage door I think is going to be pretty decent there you go there. all right we got one side we got both sides hi yeah they're on so I better turn that uh, turn this thing off so I wasn't sure if they were on but uh, I just had to get a little lower to their level and they were definitely on there so perfect uh what i'm gonna do now is just uh start figuring out what i want to do with the bumper here now the only thing i'm worried about is how these leds are going to perform um going through the projectors because those are supposed to be hids i am going to adjust this side maybe i'll put that side up just a little bit um, but as you can see when i turn on the high beams very very bright no projectors uh for these lights so those are going to be actually perfect i gonna probably um put some some painters tape down hot glue those wires so that they're all in one kind of brick i guess you can say forming sort of a harness and then we'll get some dielectric grease on there we'll tape it all up and tuck that harness in uh where no water is going to get to it but uh that was a little bit of a challenge. I wasn't expecting to spend that much time on the wiring, but that's why I'm making the video to show you guys what to expect. And uh, now comes the fun part, and that is gonna be to install the bumper onto our car. All right, so I'm gonna bring the bumper over here and uh, see if we can't match it up. Okay, so it does appear though something is touching. Ah! Okay, something definitely needs to be trimmed back there, so I'm gonna use the phone and see if I can see anything there. Alrighty, so we've got the bumper kind of mocked up under its own kind of clips there. So the big thing, I didn't have to trim anything, but I did have to take off this... Uh, this crash bar here, the foam support, which uh, doesn't surprise me. I wasn't trying to mess around with uh, with fixing it or anything. Now, I am going to try to close up. Yeah, they look pretty decent. I was going to say there's a little bit of a gap on this side, but I think once I, I get all the clips in, all the bolts, it'll kind of pull the bumper up a little bit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. The tough part is over, so it's just a matter of bolting everything up, putting some clips back on, and uh, lining everything up, making sure that it's where I want it to be. And uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and, oh, I did forget to plug in the fog lights, so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now before I forget. So this is pretty much what the wiring is going to look like. So as you can see, I put a piece of tape uh, between the stock harness from the car and then where the actual uh, plugs were going into the pins that I wanted to tap into. And the only reason I wanted to do this is if I decide to part this car out, sell it, uh, for whatever reason, I need to go back to a 2010 bumper or set of headlights. Uh, I haven't done anything to the factory wiring uh, that's going to make this thing not function properly as a 2010 so that's basically the reason i wanted to go with this and then uh, obviously if i need to change a bulb i got my positive and negative here positive and negative down there and then uh, it's just a matter of popping out the bulbs 
So let's talk about the paint for a brief second. Uh, obviously, this is a three, I think, three stage uh, pearl color. Very difficult to paint match. Um, I was told by numerous people uh, that uh, blending would be the best option. Obviously, that's going to cost more money. Um, now, the bumper that was on this thing that I took off was actually quite a bit off as far as the paint went. And, uh, ooh, this thing looks sick. And um, I took a shot, and uh, I don't think it's exactly perfect. However, this car is very dirty. Um, I'm going to use, I'm going to give it a nice car wash. I'm going to take it outside. The plan here is to plasti dip the upper grill and then this center part here hopefully today or tomorrow but before we end this video i do want to give it a car wash and we'll just double check see how the paint looks um like i said i took a chance knew it was a possibility it wouldn't be exactly perfect um the bumper i took off was pretty different compared to what the fender the hood is um so i'm not terribly worried but to do the upgrade for the price that I did the upgrade for, I think it's going to be well worth it. So yeah, we're going to pull this thing out, give it a wash, and then do our final walk around. Alrighty, so we got her all washed up, and as you can see, the paint's quite a bit whiter. Still not an exact match, but uh, close enough for me. I mean, it's about the same as what the old bumper looked like. Um... But yeah, she's all cleaned up. The paint, the white paint gets really yellow, especially over the winter. This is the first official wash. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna pull this thing back in the garage. One thing that I did forget I needed to do was uh, pull the uh, automatic uh, leveling headlight fuse. So I'm gonna pull the car back in the garage, uh, let it dry, show you guys how to pull that fuse. Then we're gonna probably put an end to this video. Alrighty, so we're back in the garage and uh, I've done a little bit of digging around and what I've decided to do for the front uh, headlight washers is just disconnect the, is that going to focus? There we go. Just disconnect the headlight washer switch here. Uh, it's basically this little clip right there. I'll just leave that one dangling and uh, then that will not work anymore. And for the headlights... I don't know if you can see here, right there, 7.5 amp AFS. That's going to be the fuse right, right there. That's the one right there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that, and that should take care of the warning light that I have on the dash right now. And uh, other than that, everything's good. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that fuse, uh, pull the switch there, put everything back together, and we'll close out this video. Alrighty, so the orange AFS light that was in the middle here, that light's gone, but I still have this auto, this auto high beam issue here. I'm assuming that's what that is because I've uh, modified the electrical system as far as the high beams go. So I'm not going to have, oops, that was the wipers. <laughs> not gonna have the uh, I don't think the auto high beam capability I would have but I'm gonna see if I can figure that out but I do want to close this video down so let's do that right now alrighty so we just gave her a quick detail uh, just wiped her down put on some uh, some armor all there because I know people always complain about how dirty my engine bays are but that is gonna be a wrap for this video so i hope you guys did enjoy this one as you can see now that she's cleaned up uh the white paint always tends to get a little yellow you got to really use some uh some iron remover in order to get the yellowness out now that it's all cleaned up it's actually not that bad man it looks pretty good the reflection flows into the bumper perfectly nice glossy finish That side you can see a little bit of a difference, but uh, let's be honest, it still looks a hundred times better than this thing, even though it is slightly off in color. 
But that's pretty much it for today's video. So if you guys did enjoy this one, don't forget to smash that like button. If you guys want to see more RX350 content, we're going to be doing a cost breakdown on how much it costs to do this swap. Uh, I am hoping to sell the headlights as well as the bumper before I do that. So I can tell you guys also how much I recoup from the stock parts that I took off. Um, but I'm just, I'm thrilled, man. I'm super happy with the way that it looks. And, uh, you know, I've never done a bumper swap that I've regretted. Um, I'm always reluctant to spend the money at first, but in the long run, um, you know, I drive this thing every single day and doing something like this where I actually built it, knowing where it came from, you know, with the wheels, the tint, the small things that I've done here and there, uh, you know, it, it uh, you take a lot of pride in it and, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I just, I'm really happy with how it turned out. So with that being said, I'm your boy Dean Ali, a.k.a. Don Squally. I just want to say thank you guys for watching. Uh, stay tuned, stay locked. If you guys did enjoy this one, don't forget to smash that like button. If you guys want to see more and you're not subscribed, definitely do so. And as always, we're going to catch y'all mofos at the next one, man. Peace.